So I literally just finished this right here, the high grade Zoart. This is like the greatest high grade grunt kit I have ever built. Now that is saying a whole lot because there's so many good high grade grunts out there, but this has just done it. It's got everything. The build is fantastic, including an almost full inner frame. It's rock solid. It looks absolutely ridiculous. It even has a little bit of a hidden gimmick right here, which is pretty cool that you can do yourself. And then I remembered what this was like in the show. Basically it's like, yeah, what a completely horribly under-implemented design right here, but the kit, the kit is fire. Let's check it out. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review. And today I'm taking a look at this ride here, the High Grade Zoart, which once again is from Mobile Suit Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. And I have to say, this line is blowing my mind over and over and over again. And this might just be the greatest grunt suit I have ever laid my hands on. Well, when it comes to high grade, that is. Then pop the fact that this is once again a pale technology suit, more than likely designed once again by Iwata, who's known for designs in Armored Core, and it really does show in this design. This looks like a high grade Armored Core mech. So for the first time, well, second time after the Firact, I guess, we've got ourselves a little bit of a mobile suit Gundam cross armored core and that is awesome anyway if you do want one of these of your own i got this through hobby link japan i will throw a link down there in the description i will mention there is another pale technology suit coming out which is the zoart again but it's the zoart heavy so yeah i highly highly high highly recommend this kit right here especially if you love yourself a cool militaristic grunt now anyway let's get right into it So when it comes to what is inside of the box with the high-grade Zowart, appearances can definitely be deceiving. Just like with the rest of this line, Bandai has nailed getting the absolute craziest mecha model kit with the least amount of plastic parts, and that definitely is the case in here. So when we actually take a look at each runner one by one, we've got runner A, which has multi-colors of plastic on it. That is the light green of the mobile suit itself, which takes me right on back to the Jeggin. We've got a clear orange piece for the visor, some light gray segments, and some dark purple. Runner B is some more of that jeggin-ish light green for the exterior armor. C is all of the inner frame parts, and I will talk a little bit about the inner frame on this kit because once again, extremely impressive. And D is some of the black parts for the weapons and some details. Finally, then we do have some beam sabers in here in that nice ultraviolet glowing green. And once again, as usual with these kits, not a single sticker to be seen at all. Now, when it comes to the actual build of this kit, these kits are astounding. And after building a couple of other kits, various high grades, that being the high grade Red Rider, as well as the high grade Gundam Rerage and the two gyms that come with that. After building some kits from around six years ago, 2016, it really gave me an idea of how far Banda has come with this particular line right here. While building this, I decided to build the inner frame first because this thing has pretty much a 95% full inner frame, which is ridiculous. Compound that with the fact that this is another awesome armored core style design. This thing is off the charts awesome and so much fun to build. Again, no stickers, no poly caps, all awesome. So I will also mention this is an entirely a straight build. I did actually do a couple of modifications, small ones. First off, the forearms seem to have a bit of a gimmick in them that's a little bit locked. It's similar to what we would have seen with the Gundam Firact, where the forearms could open up. Basically, while I was building it, I built it wrong first and realized there's a rotating part on the elbow that shouldn't rotate. It actually locks into some L-shaped pegs. Now, if you cut the small part off those L-shaped pegs, that means you do unlock the rotation at the elbow, which is separate to the actual elbow, which means we will have some motion. I guess it's not actually part of the Zoart, but we'll see what we get once it is fully built. The second thing is we have a nice layering up head in here, and I realized that it would be a shame to lose some of the detail inside of it after you put on the visor. And I thought, well, you could panel line it, but instead I decided to get some of that light reflecting back out and use the Gundam Marker EX Mechie Silver, or the metallic chrome pen. Basically, you just paint that onto the plastic just like so, and it chromes the crap out of it. So we'll see how that ends up too. So when it does come to the inner frame in here, as usual, this isn't the normal way to build it. You can just opt to do this by avoiding building the outer armor. This has pretty much 95% of a full inner frame. The only place we don't have inner frame is in the upper arms and the forearms. That's it. Besides that, this is pretty much 
a high grade grunt with a full inner frame which to me is absolutely spectacular build quality as well is fantastic to the touch and this i can't wait to get it armored up here we go so finally then getting the armor slapped on and this all attaches on perfectly it layers up very nicely allowing some of the parts from below to come through especially you can see this on the legs the thrusters look great once again like miniaturized versions of what we would have seen on the Feract, and everything just goes together great this feels fantastic looks fantastic and i have to admit this might just be the greatest high grade grunt i've ever built and i'm pretty damn sure that it is anyway now that it's built i did add a little bit of Panel lining, I did not record that, but anyway, let's jump into the aesthetics. So now jumping right on into the aesthetics, and this right here is real robot done to absolute perfection. And the armored core vibes this thing is given off is ridiculous. The way the head is almost recessed into that almost aircraft-shaped chest is undeniably armored core through and through. Now, like I mentioned, this is a kit with a full inner frame for the most part. It's just a couple of parts without inner frame, which is absolutely astounding. And you might wonder why. First off, if you're ever going to do some kind of customs, if you do battle damage, you can do it right through to the inner frame, which looks cool. But it also adds a lot of nice heft to the kit. The fact that armor is there for the sake of being armor, there's a frame there for the sake of being frame, it just seems a whole lot more premium. We also get some parts sticking through the armor, which is a very nice touch as well. Those grey thrusters in the knee segments, those are coming from underneath. Same with the thrusters down at the ankles, and it just gives it an overall actually armored mecha feel and it makes it a nice weighty kit in the hand too. This right here is essentially what you're going to get out of box. The only two things that I've done to this is I have panel lined it with a mix of black and grey and I have actually chromed out inside of the visor there. I thought it would have a nice effect, throw the light back out and boy does it. That marker is great. If you're ever going to grab yourself some Gundam markers, I always recommend the metallics. They're great for detailing some parts up and the chrome one is great for behind any clear parts like what you're seeing right there. That is glorious. But yeah, once again, just like we would have seen with the Fract, that Iwata style armored core 4 and 4 answer vibe is right here. The whole head and chest and even the skinny arms really remind me of a Ray Leonard mech, like something like the Aaliyah, which were always my favorite of the whole bunch. They're so streamlined, over the top and just look cool. And this definitely inherits those good looks. So I'm getting the Zord right here into the hand. To take a little bit of a closer look at some of the details, this is extremely nice. These chest here, vents or whatever they are, these are not coming through from the inner frame. Those are thrown on afterwards. I have to admit, just giving it that little bit of a chromed outness on the side inside of there really makes that part pop so well. We've got a nice little antenna on the top there. Looks a little bit delicate, so be a bit careful. And this looks interesting. We do have three millimeter holes in the front and the rear of both of the shoulders, which means you will be able to add on to this. And that's probably part of the Zoward Heavy. Same shoulders as we would have seen on the Fract, by the way. Now, there is only one minor complaint I would have with this kit. Everything is absolutely perfect. It's rock solid. It looks gorgeous. We've got some nice thrusters, including these ones right here. These are just on simple pegs, so they can go up and down whichever way you want. But as you can see right there, this is lacking the backpack adapter. So that does mean this is, yeah, see, no adapter. It just comes apart like so. So this is a kit right here that isn't compatible with other high grade backpacks. So if you did want to make a quick custom out of this, maybe with Frax backpack or something similar, well, you can't actually do that, sadly. So that's the only real down point with this particular suit. Otherwise, gorgeous. So as for a bit of size comparison, there it is beside the high-grade aerial Gundam, which is about average size for a Gundam, so it's a little bit shorter. And there it is beside the other high-grade Pale Technologies kit, which is the Gundam Farak. Now, from up front, it may look a little bit shorter, but this thing has all of its mass from back to front. So if you flip them all to the side just like that, this award right here is bringing the thickness. Moving now into the accessories, and here's everything that comes inside of the box. So, the Zor definitely comes lightly packing. What we get in here is a standard pair of beam sabers and the beam gun. That is all. So, as is the case with a lot of these particular Witch from Mercury kits, the only hands that we have in here are the standard holding hands. These are definitely very, very nicely sculpted, but it would have been nice as usual to have something in here like a widespread. As far as I know, there is no announced extra kit for these guys with hands included. Hold on. So I thought there might be a chance that the 
Tikbalang back here that might actually come with some hands included, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It's just the unit only. So as far as I know, there isn't any hands in the pipeline for these just yet. So next up in here, we've got the beam sabers. These are standard enough, especially by the witch from Mercury standards. So we've got the regular old beam here into a fairly regular handle. I will mention once again, these are the type of green that does glow so, so nicely under blue or ultraviolet light. This is really, really fun, especially when it comes to making displays of these kits. These can really, really light the place up. Attaching them into the hand is the usual routine. They just pop on in like so, very simply. And getting this into a pose feels great due to those nice tight plastic on plastic joints. But I will mention that sometimes these may fall out of the hands because the grip isn't the greatest. But besides that, it all works out and this thing looks stellar in pretty much every single pose. So when these are not in use, you're able to store them on the forearms in a pretty cool kind of way. Just pop off the beams and they attach onto this little peg right here, like a simpler version of the Gundam Fract. Pop it on and there they are. But what is really interesting is remember that little modification I mentioned back in the build where you can actually cut this piece so it can actually move on the arm. Well, this makes it a little bit more Gundam Fracti. So I kind of feel like Bandai may have wanted to adapt this into it, but maybe something about it made the model kit a little bit too weak or something like that but this works out so so nicely sure you're able to see to some of the actual like functional aspects of the model kit right here but it's still very nice to actually have this moving part now this is quite interesting because you'd assume this is a leftover segment from the Gundam for act and that this kit because it's by the same manufacturer in show is just using reused parts especially well, because that whole arm segment right there, it looks pretty much identical to it. However, if you take a look in there, that's a lot more detailed than what we do actually have in this particular kit right here, which makes sense as it's not as advanced a suit. Also, if you grab the runner, it does say, you know, high grade 144th scale Zowart. On the back then, it has the date of 2022. Funnily enough, 2022, not 2023. But that does mean that it's not actually using any parts. Or reusing any parts, I should say. Not in the traditional sense, like when we'd get a kit based on a kit and they'd just reprint the parts. Maybe Bandai is doing it in the CG data and moving the parts around and printing new runners. But it is still a completely new runner this kit is based on. And it feels like it, looks like it, and essentially is. They're up to some kind of black magic over there now. So the next weapon that we have in here is the beam gun. So this is definitely a very unusual design. If, well, I feel like I may have seen something like this in Armored Core as well. So we've got a handle. One nice aspect is the magazine back here can be removed, but this is a beam weapon. And last I checked, that thing right there is a bullet. So uh, yeah, there is a bullet molded into the end of this. Maybe that's just its, well, attachment point or whatever, whatever power relay. But hey, I won't complain too much. I'll take a removable magazine any day that I get it and it clicks in very, very nicely. As for getting this into the hand, it has a very nice little mechanism because you don't have to remove the back of the hands. You just move it up like so and then just pop it up into the Zowart's hand from below just like so and then it closes on over ever so simply. Now that is a very nice, simple, but effective design. Besides that though, there isn't any other detailing. There is no foil sticker included for the site, wherever that might be, because this is one unique shaped weapon. I assume that hole at the top is the barrel, or is it those little bits at the side? I don't remember. However, unlike the beam sabers, there's nowhere to attach this onto the suit when it's not in use. So now jumping into the articulation on the high grade Zowart and once again this is rock solid. It's very, very, very nice. Let's test it. So getting the Zowart down to the usual test post that I usually do in order to test all of the articulation at once and this thing absolutely kills it. Now I only had an issue with one little bit of the articulation but nothing else. Everything is rock solid which means it does outdo the Feract which in universe is meant to be the superior machine. When it comes to actually the kits, this one hands down beats the Feract. The shoulders pull out really nicely, so you're actually able to get the arms right out there in front of that large chest. The knee bend, the ankles are all really, really good. The ab crunch is absolutely ridiculous with a lot going on there. And you do then have the backpack for that extra flair to make all of the poses look very, very nice. Now, there is only one little issue, and that is that the Zort right here does have thick thighs. So that does mean you're not actually able to bring the legs in together to have one leg in front of the other for some nice flying poses. That's due to mainly the fact that we don't have a double jointed joint inside of there, but the big bit of armor right here does kind of clash with this segment a little bit when you lay, 
lays, lays, raise the leg. So you can kick it up to the front, no bother whatsoever. But if you're trying to bring it out and get a kind of lungy thing out of it, try and bring it in. There is no twist because of the clash of armor. Besides that though, this is sheer perfection. I'm just wondering, can you actually cross the arms on this because of the very nice articulation? Doesn't look like you're gonna be able to, but you can get really damn close. Also, the other thing that really impresses me about this kit is the fact that we have this bit of articulation right here in the actual waist unit, which matches up then with the ball joint or whatever it is up a little higher, giving you a great forward to back ab crunch. This kit is insane. The side to side is very nice too. So anyway, that right there is it for my review of the high grade Zoart. And I have to say this is probably the best high grade grunt suit to date. Everything about this is essentially perfect. Would have been nice to have maybe an extra hand, but besides that, I can't really complain about anything. It looks so cool, feels so cool, and it is platinum tier without a doubt. The only reason I wouldn't get this up to Gundarium is because it doesn't really do anything outside of the box when it comes to Gumpla, but everything it does, it does perfectly, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Highly, highly recommend. As usual, I got mine through Hobby Link Japan, link in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gumpla reviews, and I will see you next time. As always, I can't end this video without thanking each and every one of you guys who watches my videos. And of course, special thanks to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon and the channel members here, including Ten Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Joe, Golel Rockstar, Lauren Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.